Guys, in this video, we will look at the PUG's official valid standard by FCI. According to FCI standards PUGs are classified as companion and toy dogs that belong to the small Molossian type of dogs. Originally PUGs derived from China, but starting from around the 1500s they appear in Europe. If you want to dive deeper into PUGs history you are invited to see this rather whimsical staging, performed by the PUG. General pug appearance is square and cobby, compact in form, with knit proportions and hardness of muscle. Pugs also should not appear low on legs, lean or leggy. The phrase multiman parvo, much and little, is justly applicable with pugs. It is emphasized that pugs' proportions must be decidedly square and cobby. The behavior of the purebred pug is all charm, dignity and intelligence. They are even tempered, have a happy and lively disposition. Aggressive or overly shy dogs are considered as disqualifying faults. In my next video we will look closely at the pug character and temperament, so subscribe to the channel and turn on that bell button to not miss it out. Head is probably the most characteristical part of all Molossian types of dogs, even the little ones. By the FCI standard, the pug's head is relatively large and in proportion to the body, round, but not apple-headed. Pug's skulls have no indentation. Wrinkles on forehead clearly defined, but without exaggeration. Pug's nose must be black with rather large well-opened nostrils. Pinched nostrils and heavy over-nose wrinkle is unacceptable and should be heavily penalized. The muzzle of the pug must be short, blunt, square, but not up-faced. Eyes or nose never adversely affected or obscured by over-nose wrinkle. By the world-recognized standard, pugs must have slightly undershot jaws. Wide lower jaw having incisors almost in a straight line. Rye mouth, teeth or tongue showing acute, but highly undesirable in the show ring, and should be heavily penalized. Pug eyes are dark, relatively large, round in shape, soft and solicitous in expression, very lustrous, and when excited, full of fire. The eyes must not be protruding, exaggerated or showing white when looking straight ahead. Generally healthy looking eyes. There are two types of pugs ears allowed for purebred pugs the so-called rose ear and button ear. Rose ear is small drop ear which folds over and back to reveal the burr. Button ear ear flap folding forward, tip lying close to the skull and cover opening. Button ear is more appreciated. The neck must be long enough to carry the pug's head proudly, strong, thick and slightly arched, resembling a crest. Pug's body is short and cobby, with a level top line, but never roached or dipping. The chest must be broad. Ribs quite sprung and carried well back. Pug's tail is high set and tightly curled over the hip. A double curled tail is most appreciated. Dog's four quarters mainly consist of the shoulder, forearm and forefeet. According to the standard Pug's shoulder must be well sloped, the legs must be very strong and straight, of moderate length, and well under the body. The forefeet standard is described as less long than the hare foot, and not so round as that of the cat with well split toes and black nails. The hindquarters are very strong, of moderate length, well under the body, straight and parallel when viewed from the rear. Pug's knees have a good turn. Hind feet neither, so long as the foot of the hare, nor so round as that of the cat, the toes well split up, the nails are black. When in movement and viewed from the front, pugs should rise, and fall with legs well under shoulder, feet looking directly to the front, not turning in or out. From behind action just as true. The dog must use forelegs strongly putting them well forward with hind legs moving freely and using stifles well. It is typical for pugs to have a slight roll of hindquarters and gait. Pugs must be capable of purposeful and steady movement. Pug's coat goes in four colors. Silver, apricot, much beloved by Queen Victoria, fawn and black. Each is clearly defined to make contrast complete between color, trace, black line extending from occiput to tail, and mask. Markings are clearly defined. Muzzle or mask, ears, moles on cheeks, thumb mark or diamond on forehead and trace should be as black as possible. The hair quality is fine, smooth, soft, short and glossy, neither harsh nor woolly. For some reason, FCI standards don't separate male and female weights for pugs, and give the ideal weight of 6.3 to 8.1 kilograms. Male animals should have two apparently normal testicles fully descended into the scrotum. Obviously, only functionally and clinically healthy dogs, with breed-typical conformation allowed to be used for breeding. As was mentioned above, aggressive and overly shy dogs are subject to disqualification, as well as any dog clearly showing physical or behavioral abnormalities. 
The fault of the standard is described as any departure from the foregoing points. The seriousness with which the fault should be regarded should be in exact proportion to its degree and its effect upon the health and welfare of the dog. In my modest, unqualified opinion this part would be better defined more clearly, so that we don't get so many pugs with almost no muzzles, and therefore many health problems, I will definitely make a video on this topic. That is the full description of the pug breed standard according to FCI. If you liked the video, push that like button and subscribe to the channel, to see more videos about dog breeds and dogs in general. For those who adore pugs, and want to donate to the channel, I prepared a t-shirt design, which you may purchase on the link below. Thank you for watching and supporting my channel. I really appreciate that, guys. See you next time.